Are you ready to conquer light and shadow and create masterful motion design? We'll be using After Effects to create 3D scenes with reactive lighting that will make your vision truly cinematic. And it's all very easy to do. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, we have a lot of great concepts in this one. We'll be combining 3D objects with 3D lighting along with 3D orbital animations. And if you do the math, that's 27D. As you can see with the reactive lighting, our master objective here is to have all these concepts interact with one another. All right, the first thing we need to do is create our primary 3D object. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create the shape and make sure that shape is white. Now, when you're working with actual 3D and After Effects, you need to set the renderer of your project to either Advanced 3D or in my case, we'll use Cinema 4D. So when you make your shape a 3D layer, this allows you to go into the geometry options and increase the extrusion depth, which I'll set to 300. Since we're going for an orbital type scene, I want to make sure that this object is absolutely in the center of the project. So to help with this, we can set our display to two views and then we'll set that second view to top. And now we can see that this is not perfectly centered, though we can adjust the anchor point of our rectangle layer to the center of our composition. And pro tip, be sure to enable title safes when doing this. And lastly, set the Y rotation to 45 degrees, and if needed, you can lower the Y position. Now that we have a 3D shape here, one thing we should do real quick is actually make this look 3D and create a camera. And then we can use the camera tools to angle downwards towards the top of the shape. And this would also be a great opportunity to add keyframes for point of interest and position. Then you can dolly into your scene using the camera tools. Very nice, but feel free to adjust the camera animation later. Okay, now let's jump into my favorite part of this tutorial, lighting. Don't worry, this is so simple and the lighting makes everything more professional. Even my mediocre voice sounds more professional. Hey, who wrote that? Go ahead and create a new light. Set it to a point light and our 3D shape should update as a result of this light. And if we adjust the light's Y position, uh, you can now see how the lighting changes. Now what I would really like to do is rotate this light around our shape in 3D space. The easiest way to pull this off is by creating a null object, make it 3D, and by default, the null should be centered in your scene. So if we all click the stopwatch for Y rotation and use the time asterisk 200 expression, then parent the light to the null. Now our light should rotate around the scene, which is really nice. If this scene has too much contrast or in other words, uh, kind of dark, this would be a great opportunity to create another light and move it below the scene and away from the shape. Uh, then we could add, say, the wiggle expression to the intensity. Uh, we'll use 8, 20, for example. And when this is done, this will create a flickering light animation that affects the entire scene. At this point, we essentially just have an invisible light source. You actually can't see the light bulb, if you will. So this is a great opportunity to create perhaps an orbital scene with a sun. And since our work is mostly done, doing this is easy. Just create a circle with the ellipse tool. And of course, make the layer 3D. Then go to the position and alt click the stopwatch. Uh, parent the position to the position of the light source. Then parent the main circle uh, to that null object that we created for the rotation. And to make the circle appear white, go into the material options and turn off accept lights. And set the diffuse to 100%. Now, before you play back anything, select a circle, go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and select Orient Towards Camera. Perfect. This is starting to look really legit. And this is my first day of doing motion design. Just kidding. I don't even know what motion design is. Anyways, you can use this step to add in other orbital objects into your scene. However, you just need to parent it to the null object and not the light's position as well. Using that top 3D view makes it very easy to position these additional graphics, which could be planets. Next step, faking the moon landing. But before we move on, I just wanted to mention that we have a 100 free template pack that you should absolutely get your hands on for After Effects. And if you ever need to save time, we have over 35,000 templates to help you produce amazing work with the link below. All right, back in it, and sorry, I lied. We're not gonna be faking the moon landing. But we're going to make this scene look so much better with just a few effects. So create yourself an adjustment layer, 
apply the noise effect, set it to around 12% and uncheck color noise. Then apply posterize and set it to about 12. And keep in mind, these effects are just optional. However, the big bad boy here is the glow effect. All you need to do is set the glow radius to an insane number like 500 and duplicate the effect. And that glow does wonders for light reflections, very cinematic. And to any of you cinematographers out there, this is like using lens diffusion in a way. And as a bonus tip, you can also add the brightness and contrast effect and apply a wiggle expression to the brightness to give your scene a subtle flicker. And if you're looking for a 3D particle effect, take a look at applying CC ball action to a white solid layer and then adjust the scatter and the ball size. And because this is a 3D particle effect, your camera will fly through the simple field of particles. Okay, let's get back on track. One last thing we need to talk about is shadows. Let's say you want to integrate uh, another object in your scene. I have here uh, this vector in which I'll move into 3D space on top of our rectangle. What I like to do is duplicate this object and set the anchor point to the bottom center of the layer. So when I set the X rotation to 90 degrees, this will lay flat on the surface. Then all we need to do is parent the shadow to that orbital null object. And if you need to set your layer to actually look like a shadow, you can use the fill effect to make it black. However, shadows can now interact with your light source. Now you should be able to take these concepts and hopefully create unique pieces of work. For example, instead of a rectangle, we can use the pen tool to design a custom path for our 3D object. So subscribe if you want to be the best and always be creating.